And we'll look here now. This is the circuit, the mods, as posted by Mr. Modemhead on the EEV blog forum. Uh, what we have is there's a, an LM317 voltage regulator, which is being used as a current source. And which is fine because that's what you want to charge the batteries. Um, but, uh, and then the batteries kind of act as a voltage regulator. Uh, rather poor one, but uh, as a voltage regulator. Um, so, by, when we eliminate the batteries, we're going to turn this into a voltage source, and then it should operate just fine. Now, he has this resistor being replaced. He has this resistor being replaced with a jumper. He has uh, a resistor added and a jumper installed, and traces cut. PC board traces cut here and here. Um, I don't want to cut the traces on the PC board. So what I'm going to do is actually put a uh, resistor in series with this. So I'll lift the leg and I'll put a resistor in series and bring that back over here to pin one of the regulator. Uh, that's going to uh, require lifting the leg of the regulator out of the uh, PC board, but that has the effect of providing this circuit break. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll have this resistor and this new resistor that I've added in series with this going to here. By lifting the leg of this one, I provide that break, and then I'll put this jumper actually on the uh, uh, on the solder side of the board, right over the pins for R25 uh, without removing it. And that will give the same effect without uh, cutting the board at all. Okay, so let's look at this. This is the regulator right here. You can see that. It's got a heat sink on it, obviously. All right, proceeding. Uh, diagram. We're, we're, we're working around R25 and R26, so we've got to find them. Well, those are right here, R25 and R26. Uh, we can check that from the other side as well. Um, this is the regulator, so pin one, two, three. Pin two, as we see, comes up to here, which is one side of pin of, of R25. And as you can see, that's the uh, upper side, which now is the downside, which means that since we want to lift the other pin, uh, it's the, the longer pin which is very nice. And then we'll put a jumper across R26, which would be these two right here. So let's start with the jumper. And for that, we're gonna use our finest jumper wire, which is just a uh, clipped off lead from a resistor that we, or maybe one of the capacitors probably, that we just used, we just installed. Okay, so I am going to wrap that nice and tight there. Uh, let's see, I'm lost. I have to find it again. Uh, da, da, da. That's two, that's two, that goes to there, so we're here. These two. All right. This is really all that's needed. Uh huh. Where's those tweezers? All right here. Look. Let's bring this back to here. All right. That's good.
feeling like a dentist right now. Okay, I'll hit this again because it did move, I noticed. All right. All right, let's lift the leg of our 25. Oh, I'm going to use the solder sucker. So, let's see. Yeah. It's also the leg, happens to be the leg which goes to R26. So, there we go. Right. I'm going to grab it with the needle nose pliers. Now, what we want to do, so we are here, and we've made that break by lifting it, and we've done that, of course. Um, so now, rather than replace that with a 150, I'm going to put a 150 in series, and the 150 in series is going to go to here, which is going to go in series with a 470 ohm. I don't know why he said 510. But it's 470 is a more appropriate value. Oh, well, let me get it down here where you can see it. Okay. Um, right, I'm going to go 150. And then in series with a 470 to ground. Where the 470 and the 150 come together, that will go to pin 1 of the voltage regulator. Which I need to lift to create that break. Now, where is a good ground? He's saying use the negative pin of C23. That's on the other side of the board. However, what we can see here, if we look closely, pin one of this connector uh, that goes to the display, that is ground. Okay, and if we follow that down, we'll see that there's a feed through right here. I don't know if you can see that in there. There is, right there, right there. Let me see how close I can get this. Whoa. <laughs> it's gotta go there. There's a, there's a hole right there <laughs> that is ground. Um, which I can use. So the 470 can just drop right into that. Um, let me demonstrate. Well, I'll demonstrate with the continuity tester. Oops. Okay. Now I'm going to put that there. And where is ground? Ground happens to be, well, we can check that negative side of that, of that pin right there, of that capacitor. That's, okay. So that's where we're going to go. So this is going to go from there up around. And this is going to go from here to there. And then there's another, and then there's a center tap here. So I can wrap this here. I think I can wrap this.
shorten that, but that's okay. Let me go ahead and solder these. Yeah, sure, I'll solder these. If I stick that in there, I want some tubing. Oh, I've got all these wonderful colors of heat shrink tubing. Which one shall I use? I kind of like this yellow with green stripes because I know I'll never use it for anything else. Um, Or is it green with yellow stripes? I can't tell. No, it's yellow with green stripes. If you look inside, it's yellow. Okay. So, 470. I'll put that over in a minute. Okay, that's going to go into there, which is ground. Just for the purpose of soldering it, we'll tilt it over there. Okay. See, because it's otherwise it's going to fall out. Oh, it just did. Oh, it turns out there's two grounds right next to each other that I could use. That's the 470 in place to ground. Let me solder, let me just solder this in place. Okay. Solder this one, pull it back out. Where was it? the longer of the two or shorter. Uh, they both came out about the same. Okay, it's fine. That goes there. This goes here. That's too long. This is too long. That I can live with. 
this will go on and then we go back into that hole there we'll solder that back in place All right. Now, all that's left is we've got 150 to 470 to ground. Uh, we need to connect that center point to pin one. But first lifting pin one. Now this is hard. This is this here is pin one. And uh, I may have to I may have to uh, desolder more than one pin to get it to lift out. Okay, I'm gonna have to do one and two be able to lift one out. Let's get it. All right, I've got pin one clear. I'm going to bend it forward. Kick that leg up. And then I'm going to go back to two and three. And whoops. Set them back in. Let's see. here to there with more heat shrink tubing and for that I'm going to use uh, some 20 gauge solid wire which is just what I have um, Is cramping up my left hand. I don't know why. Oh. 
Well, I'm not sure how to make this work. I do think I want to be on the other side. All right. That's just sort of soldered the touching, and that's all it really needs. Put some heat shrink down there to uh, make sure that doesn't short out on anything or anything like that. And then I have to connect this wire up to here. It's too long, it's too long. I can fix that. And uh, again, that'll be all it needs. Not the prettiest mod in the world. Okay. That should be it. Now, I know a lot of people are going to complain about this hokey looking thing and how it's unstable or whatever and how it's solid wire and vibration's going to kill it and yeah blah blah I don't care. Uh, let's get the uh, hair dryer and uh, shrink that tubing. Well we should test it first shouldn't we? No because that involves putting it all back together uh, and then uh, taking it apart. If it works, I'd rather take it apart if it doesn't work. So, what I'm going to do at this moment is I'm going to go ahead and clean this in alcohol and the, uh, oops, and the other side. Just clean that with alcohol to make sure we've got a good connection. Um, I should do the same on the bottom. Now, um, the thing, I'm going to leave this out. The thing I need to do is, there are test points here. And uh, so I'll measure the voltages. Yeah, I need a meter. Doesn't have to be a great meter. Test point one is ground. Find test point one. It's test point one. Okay. So let us quickly check. Test point, what have I got? Test point four should be minus five volts. What do you got? That's pretty close. That's close enough. Okay. Uh, let's find another test point. I got test point 12 here. What's the, no. That's 50 hertz square wave. Uh, test point, oh. Oh, here. Test point two. Test point two should be plus 13 volts. Eh, close enough. I think. Test point three is supposed to be plus six volts. 
That's pretty close. This point 0.5, if I can find it, is minus 10 volts. This point 0.5 is over here. Minus 10, okay. So that's all pretty close. I guess I can put the processor back in. Uh, I'm just going to make sure that I'm... We're all at the same potential here, so I don't fry this chip. Goes in this way. The chip back in. Sweet. And uh, let's just power it on and see what we see. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, we're on a K-ohm scale, we got volts. Out of range, there we go. All right, it's back, it's, it, it lives. <laughs>